Greetings! This year, OWC featured the qualifier stage for the first time in its history. It provides a great opportunity for weaker countries to participate, which might not be possible with the old structure. Ah, I remember back in 2016, Hungary could not qualify for the OWC, since we didn't have enough high-ranked players. Or we did, they just didn't sign up, but anyway, with such interesting changes to the OWC, it is possible that we might see similar experiments in the future. One of the more popular requests is about allowing more than one team per country to participate. The basic idea behind this is that certain bigger countries, such as the US, have tons of great players with skills way above the OWC average, and these people will never get to participate in the OS World Cup due to the ridiculously high bar their countries set for members. There are some obvious pros and cons to this proposal. I think we should look at both sides and hopefully my dear viewers will be able to formulate their own informed opinion on the matter. I have high hopes for you guys. First of all, if we allow multiple teams from the same country, what should be the maximum amount? The assumption is that it would be only two teams, but if the argument is that really high level players won't make it despite being well above OWC level, then countries such as the US perhaps maybe even Korea, Germany and even the UK, would still have highly skilled players missing out on this unique opportunity, only because they are from a highly competitive country. The OWC may be considered the most prestigious tournament of the game, even though arguably it is not the greatest showcase of tournament skills. After all, the average skill of high-profile, no-rank limit tournaments, such as the recent and controversial Game Most tournament, or the 2017 OHC far surpass OWC levels. Only the finals and maybe the semi-finals provide similar levels of gameplay. So what makes OWC participation so desirable? I think it is due to the official nature of the World Cup, which raises the expectations of the players. It would explain why people think OWC participation as something unique, even though we have high-profile community tournaments beyond the World Cup. And it also explains why there is no OWC without some major juicy drama about player performance, less than perfect organization or the tournament prices. Basically, the community expects OWC to be professional eSport level tournament, even when it has no intention of being one. Although I might be wrong here, so correct me if I am. Anyhow, the group stage and the qualifiers aren't the most exciting, but big upsets are definitely the highlight of the early phase of OWC. Romania and Denmark beat Poland last year during the group stages, one of the strongest teams in the tournament. The stakes are a lot higher when there is only one team of each country. The knockout of Poland wouldn't have been such a tragic moment if they had a B team that could advance instead of them. On the other side of the spectrum, imagine if the finals were USA versus USB. Pretty anticlimactic if you ask me. Basically, allowing more than one team per country would make the World Cup less of a World Cup, and more like a country-restricted tournament, which can be a good thing, but I believe OWC should keep its integrity as a traditional one-team-per-one-country tournament. Since this is just my opinion, feel free to disagree in the comment section. While we are talking about B-teams, we should touch upon the idea of merged countries. If you prefer a country-restricted tournament with higher display of skill, then logically speaking, weak countries merging should also excite you. After all, there are some countries which have no chance to even qualify, but if they merge with another D-tiered country, then perhaps they could form a formidable team. Just imagine Team Czechoslovakia making a comeback. Of course, merging countries should not be unhinged, since Team Europe might be a little bit overpowered, although Team Africa might be viable. Speaking of interesting concepts, OWC could also feature fun showcase matches, such as all-star teams chosen by the community, similar to what the international does in Dota. Of course, OWC participants would need to agree to be part of this. After all, it would be pretty awkward if some of them wouldn't even show up. It would also be a nice experiment with the concept of a solo World Cup. It would allow another chance for highly skilled top players in competitive countries to participate in an official World Cup. Wait a second, wasn't that the main problem with the OWC? God damn it! Anyhow, besides that, I think we could have more high profile 4v4 community tournaments, because, well, there might be a little bit of a shortage in that. There are many possibilities on how the qualifiers could look like in a solo OWC tournament. In my humble opinion, 
An effective method would be to create a map pool, similar to OWC 2019's qualifiers, and have each country organize its own qualifier tournament at a predetermined time to avoid falsifying scores. Countries with only one or two viable players could hold their qualifiers together, based on time zones. After all the players have been tested, the top, uh, I don't know, perhaps 128 would qualify for the group stages. And from there on it's smooth sailing. So to summarize the video, there are certain risks and additional adjustments to consider if we want to create B teams for the highly competitive countries. As such, I think it would be more ideal to expand OWC with fun events and perhaps a solo version. Anyhow, what do you guys think? Do you think the advantages of B teams outweigh the disadvantages? Or do you think OWC should be left as it is? Which team do you root for this year? Let me know down in the comments below.